Typical disclaimer. Oh, sorry. In the world of information security, SQL injection is considered a state level APTs are running wild, and virtualization has become a leading cause of cloud computing. Traditional <laughs> <laughs> security enforcement protocols have not been working. Fosky and Fossum have created a new educational program for CEOs, CIOs, project managers, offshore and outsourced sweatshop developers, and assisting the old Jimmy Dev who is coding your e commerce website. This is the result. Ooh. Hello, everybody. I'm so glad you could make it here today for this very special show. As Metal Storm alluded to, I'm Tomsky and I consider myself somewhat of a thought leader. And I'd like to introduce you a very special friend of mine, Bailey the Fail Monster. Yay! <laughs> I would like to point out that he is also the reason the sound system is bad, because he designed it. <laughs> Say hello to the people, Bailey. Hello to the people, Bailey. You silly monster, say hello properly. Hello, Siskan! Today we present to Siskan the fail a bit. It is the A to Z of security fails that have been collected over the past few years. Some of these fails are global, and some of them are very near and dear to us New Zealanders' hearts. You'll know the New Zealand ones as they will have a little New Zealand in the corner. Fairly show the nice people the picture. So, A is for Apple. Mmm. <laughs> apples. I like apples. Apples are good for you. My vet says an apple a day keeps the breath away. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of keeping the breath away, Faley. But above everything, good hygiene is important. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like clean code to me. It's like this paper was meant to be in this presentation because, as we know, it has been called Go To Fail. That's why I put it in there. I didn't know you worked at Apple Failing. Yep, sure did. I was across a lot of other projects too. Was this you then? <laughs> no, nope. don't got nipples. <laughs> now, B is for Bitcoin. The cryptocurrency that created a wave of cyber optimism and speculation, with everyone out to create a quick buck or two. Mm, I did consider investing in Bitcoin, but I prefer longer term investments with less risk. Being fiscally responsible is a must for a security contractor like myself. That is probably a good idea, Faye, as due to a raft of security issues, that initial bubble eventually burst in spectacular fashion. Yep, but there are so many different security failings related to Bitcoin. I don't know how we can narrow it down to just one specific thing. Well, since I am a thought leader, I think I can help. You see, in my opinion, the speculators forgot what the main Bitcoin exchange was running on. You know, <laughs> the initial infrastructure and source code that it was designed to support. <laughs> Magic players? Surely Penn and Teller, David Bain, and David Copperfield would only use a site that will keep their secrets safe and secure? Not those types of magicians, Faley. And unfortunately, the Bitcoin exchange Mt. Cox really had a couple of cracks. Well, Bitcoin is new technology. Sorry, I've been talking about that. Bitcoin is a new technology. I would expect a few cracks here and there. Well, Faye, there are a few major cracks in Mt. Gox's security offering, just like at this recent Magic the Gathering tournament. I like actual money anyway, you know, the stuff you get off credit cards. Money. Councils, car parks, credit cards, and bomb ticket. Um, 
So, multiple incidents on large flat BCI compliant <laughs> networks around New Zealand. Some networks even connected through to hospitals, which then got on Flickr. You don't need zero data phone New Zealand networks, just a USB stick. <laughs> Now, D was for distribute IT. Don't you mean D is for distribute IT? Nope. Was. D was for distribute IT. An Australian register and hosting provider. Until they got hacked and had no backups anywhere. <laughs> well, how did that happen? Surely a responsible business would have some backups. Now, D is for DMCA. Of course, the DMCA takedown notice is used to protect copyright holders and identify the individuals to make sure they get the remuneration they deserve. I have a really great example of that. Really? Press the space bar. So, while contracting at Microsoft, I discovered that most of the downloads of Microsoft products came from one site. So I asked Google to take it down. And they did, but they didn't really appreciate my work. In fact, I had to give back my MCSE, and I've also got a trespass notice against all active directory installations <coughs> on the planet. Now, E is for EA Games, one of the largest publishers of electronic payment in the world. But on the flip side, they've also won this dubious honour. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Popsky? Looks like something I I make after too much singta and soup dumplings. <laughs> well, Fanny, this is the consumerist prize for the worst. Oh, this is the consumerist prize for the worst company in America, in which EA Games managed to win two years in a row. Ooh. Consumers may not like them, but it's a good place to work. I worked on a project they were undertaking to boost revenue on iPad games division. Did it have anything to do with? Posting an Apple ID phishing site on their main website. Yep. You see, the project was to steal the Apple IDs and then purchase our iOS games using the first credentials. F is for Flight Center. Ah, yes, Flight Center. It's a New Zealand travel booking agency who had some clients' credit card information stolen from an internal system from their internal systems by an insider. Really, Fanny? Who would do such a thing as steal credit card details? We did. We did? We did? But I have never ever worked for Flight Centre. Look, I had sex and liberties. You don't think Thomas would actually pay for us to fly up here and say this shit, do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh god, please don't mean you managed to fuck off Russia. Niet, niet, comrade. Niet, <laughs> niet. But weren't you the one that was organising the goodie bags for the world leaders at the G20? Yeah, I was. I got the USB sticks straight from the manufacturer. And then while I was putting the goodie bags together, I was like, oh, maybe I'll include a copy of my CV. Because I like to work for governments. So I plugged it in to the free engineer kiosk and copied my CV onto all of them. So, ah, so that's how all the malware, the password, meeting, uh, password setting malware got on there. I think so. But you see, I don't know what all the fuss is about. I mean, yeah, sure, passwords got stolen. Yeah, they got stolen. But I managed to get them all back. How did you manage to get them back? My friends at Adobe. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me copies of all the passwords. So I just emailed the passwords back to the affected prime ministers and presidents. <laughs> National practice averted. Half of Korea. Now, H is for half of Korea. Um, since you seem to love USB sticks, you weren't responsible for any of the USB database loss that caused half of Korea's credit card details, personal information to become available to a telemarketing industry, were you? Sort of. You see, what happened is I made a backup of the credit card database because the network was really slow, right? And I was going to the data center, but on the way there, I uh, bumped into a Korean drinking buddy. And so we went to the pub and I gave him the USB key to take to the data center, um, but he never turned up. <laughs> Did you actually manage to get out of Korea, you know, unscathed at all? Nah. 
had to leave. But the whole incident sparked my interest in PCI, so I became a QSA. Oh, that's great, Bailey. Everyone, give Bailey a round of applause. Yay! Out of curiosity, do you have any other do you have any other qualifications at all, Bailey? I sure do. I'm trying to collect the entire alphabet. <laughs> So now, I have the letters Q, S, A, P, C, I, E and A. Eight down, 16 to go. That's 18, Bailey. But anyway, given the recent data breach that you know, the CEH database had, aren't you at all worried about your information becoming public? Not at all. Not at all. Oh. Is it because you seem to keep all of your private information public? Oh yeah, I do, I do. It's like, and in fact, I've got my endorsement video right here, which is attached to my CV. I'd like to show all the five hacksaws right now. <laughs> wow, those are some really nice things Snare said about you. Let's hope that you, let's hope that you use your qualifications for good. Because, yes. Because as you know, there's a whole internet of things out there. Yes, so much possibility for good. And evil, and general indifference. I believe raising a baby is a community project, so I wanted the neighbours to help raise children, safer communities together. It's a bit unfortunate that someone hijacked your sharing design in order to shout obscenities over a baby monitor in the UK. That's false. The screaming was due to something else I designed. <laughs> They got hot water when they were not expecting it. <laughs> oh, Bailey, that is no good. You must try harder to stop things clouding your vision while you were designing your various architectures. Well, speaking of clouded vision, no talk is complete without mentioning the cloud. Loved by some, loathed by some, and others just generally deny its existence. Ah yes, the marvellous cloud. You see, as a thought leader, I have a great interest in this. It is my belief that the cloud is home to blue sky ideas. They are in a post-synergy state, but with proper engagement and onboarding with the correct stakeholders, this will enable customer satisfaction, which will be the cornerstone of all future state and our end state. Ugh! All oh, that shit you just you made me want to rinse. <laughs> now, question for everyone here today. Who? Who? <laughs> who here would gladly plug their flat smartphone device into a random kiosk, a random charging kiosk station at a conference? What about at an airport? Or a bus station. Well, looks like we've, used, we've learned the things, uh, learned a few things from a few years ago. I love to charge my iPhone everywhere and anywhere. Well, I have to. The fucking thing goes flat every ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but I really like to update my Facebook status, and checking it is important to me and my parole officer. <laughs> well, you are not alone, Fanny. And at DevCon 2011, 360 hackers decided that it was a good idea to plug themselves into a charging station at, um, at DEFCON. You better add one to that. 361 it is then. Now, K is for kiosk. Oh, he's gone. I was thinking, right? 
Right. So, I helped design some kiosks in New Zealand, except I got the architecture a little bit muddled up. What happened when you got your architecture muddled up, Peter? Well, prisoners got access to the internet when they shouldn't have. And then drop the <laughs> got full access to all the internal files of government agency. I mean, when all they should have done was get internet access to find a job. Jesus. And all of this without using ICAP. <laughs> well done. So it's a wonderful list we feel. It's also, it's also probably why he left the room. <laughs> ah, it's fun to help. Yes, L is for legal action. And I know you love to help, Peter, but sometimes it's, sometimes it's just not worth it. A couple of years ago, Patrick Webster thought he was doing the right thing by notifying a company called First State, which looks after government remuneration and retirement funds. Um, here's what he got back from the CEO. No, no. I would I would assure you that uh, most members would see this intrusion as a third party, regardless of whether he's trying to prove he can crack the file or not. Most members would say that they 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 would feel very uncomfortable by this if it's been breached by a third party, particularly a, a security expert who's trying to prove the point. What what a cockfight that CEO is. Clearly, <laughs> language. Oh, he's not the only one. I really hate hypocritical cockfight politicians even more. <laughs> so let me explain this to you. This man here is a member of New Zealand Parliament. As part of a parliamentary investigation, it was discovered that there was potentially personal and private emails of his that were sent to third parties um, while they did this investigation. Unapproved, of course, because you know governments choose the cheapest outsourcer. And so he acted very shocked and stunned when he found out about this. He was so shocked and stunned that he demanded an investigation into the investigations. That's nothing. Then the cockfight turned around and cast the final deciding vote that made it legal for the New Zealand government to spy on its citizens without their knowledge. Shit. <laughs> what an ass. Now, M is for malware, the bread and butter of all vendor antivirus products. Well, as a CISSP, I know that updating AV will keep me safe and secure. <laughs> so how come visitors to a website that was underneath your control and monitoring were compromised by banner ads? Well, normally I would have been monitoring, right? But there's a cold snap coming and it was a really busy time of year and so I just had to get on. <laughs> <laughs> I work for them. <laughs> you worked for the NSA? Yep. One of the recruiters saw my LinkedIn profile with all of my letters on it and asked if I wanted a job. So let me get this fucking straight. You, fairly the fail monster, work for the NSA? Yep. Short term co contract with long term impact. Over lunch? Over lunch. <laughs> you see, the team and I visit this little Asian restaurant down the road from the office. So much that they named a menu item after me. I love me some spicy tuna. <laughs> well, I guess that's interesting, but what I want to know is what did you design? Why does no one seem to care about the fact I have a menu item named after me? <laughs> Just fucking tell me what you did. Well. We drew the design on the other side of the menu, and it seems to have become pretty famous, but fuck Vizio. I do my best designs over sushi and beers. Now, I was for online auctions and OWAS top 10. I think I know what you did. It was a Weedle, right? Yes. I was the lead security architect on the project. We launched in November, and my goal was to make certain that we were secure from day one. Well, considering that you were able to copy Trade Me, which was a copy of eBay, which is a copy of every other online auction site ever, I would assume that you would know what to do, you know. Well, we were online for two days. Well, bits of two days. Then the boss turned everything off. Why did they turn it off? I mean, you must have had a substantial amount of development time. Oh well, yeah, but then there was this thing called cross-site scripting. I don't know what that is. I mean, what is this? 
OWASP top 10 thing. It's hard to me. OWASP has 10 things. 10 things. I've only got 8 fucking fingers. <laughs> That must have been sad to see all your hard work get quickly turned off. Not really. On the plus side, it took seven months to rebuild it all. And it can still be wrecked quite a sweet thing. <laughs> now, P is for PKI. It's, it's been one of the years for PKI, hasn't it, Fanny? Yep. I guess Peter Goodman's been right all along. Komodo, Digital Star SSL, and Global Sign have all hit the headlines for various reasons and various other companies have completely forgot to reduce certain SSL certs. So, some of these actually even went out of business. Yep, the list gets bigger and bigger. It's a good thing that I've had my very own consultant regarding PKI. You have your very own PKI consultant? Who the hell would work with you? He's called the Crypto Branch. <laughs> Now, Q is for QR codes. Why are these things still a thing? Normally they've been blown up and completely unreadable and are stuck on the side of buses, which of course are travelling at speed and you can't take any pictures of the said QR code that's been developed by the marketing team. Well, I guess that's part of the reason why QR codes are still an issue. Because who cares about QR codes? Uh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, uh, apparently Google didn't care about QR codes and the earlier versions of Google Glass. And really, who can blame them? Once again, to me, it is basically a marketing tool. I designed an entire enterprise grade public transport ticketing system around QR codes. Well, that's, well, that's a, like a fun... That's a fun... Well, that sounds like it's got a, it's got success written on it. Where did, where did they get you to uh, implement this? Well, I was a security architect on the new bullet train. I really needed to identify and verify people, so we had their names and their passport ID built into the QR codes on the ticket. So China let you book a QR code that had the person's passport number or ID number, name and address on it, you do realise that QR codes are just a standard format. Yep, but this was in 2011, and the whole protection of people's privacy wasn't a thing then. I have a challenge for the, for the audience. First person to scan the QR code and tell me what it does wins the prize. Let's <laughs> uh, oh. move your head. Move your head. LinkedIn page. What's that? What? Put up your head. Who's that? What? Famous LinkedIn page. <laughs> That's right, it is a, it is Fanny's LinkedIn page, and I'm surprised someone trusted InfoSec speakers at an InfoSec conference with the QR code in a presentation. You guys, you guys are really fucking brave. No, no, it's, it's all right, it's an Android phone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, come, come find us after the talk, we'll give you your prize. Now, now Fanny, when RSA comes up, what do you think of security? <laughs> And what else? Remote access. And what else? Former <laughs> What on earth did RSA hire you to work on? I was given the opportunity to work on r and products, specifically focused on payments, in with our business partners. <laughs> really? They hired you for patent development? Yep. Not my strongest area, mind you. But the NSA is one of our strategic partners. 
So I got my friends at NSA in touch with the RSA, and we were able to work on mutual stuff. With a substantial budget, I guess. Uh, it didn't happen to be this bit of painting. Uh, yep. <laughs> they, they, they mentioned something about curves and photography and... Oh fuck, I was never good at maths anyway. So I just sat there doing on menus again. Uh, as for sound system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good to write the We'll rewrite the Breslo later. <laughs> no further bet spending the last few years would be complete without, you know, a wow. one page mention of Sony. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> With special emphasis on the PlayStation Network being hacked. What a fuck up, eh? Yes, well, that was a big long incident for Sony failing. <laughs> but there's no way there's no way to compress the Sony fuck up into one slide. Not the press slides. This plus the fuck just keeps on giving. Sure did. I am tentative to press the button. <laughs> Two months into the attacks and basic security issues were still being found on Sony websites. This long this lasted longer than trying to watch the, trying to watch the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> trying to watch the Lord of the Rings movie. Back to back to back. Direct this guy. Well, this one should be interesting. The Pacific world is now watching as Target and Trustwave throw lawsuits at each other about all manner of things. But at the crux of the matter, of course, is PCI. Yep, my work as a QSA has something to do with these lawsuits, though. Really? Yep, really. I know the truth. I am the truth. You probably can't handle the fucking truth. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to lay it here, right here on the table. Well, on the screen. Right now, this is what happened. Shit, it's blank. Where's my slide? Next slide, next slide, quick. No, no, next slide, next slide. Yeah. Why are we making fun of an unemployed trucking? I'm not making fun of an unemployed trucking, but he made a fool of some very big companies in Australia. He owned a $36 billion national network? Yup. He must have been busy. Well, not, not too busy. He still had time to take down distributed IT as well. That's evil. Yep. That's his name. Evil. Arrested without bail on 49 counts. Are you sure? He's uh, just an update. This guy got let out of uh, got let back out of prison a couple of months ago as he served his time um, not on this but for a related matter. Now, these for the Vatican. Ah, that's blasphemous. Why are we committing blasphemy, Fanny? Because you know. <laughs> What's this you downloading a pirate version of football method? I mean, the Pope is a card-carrying San Lorenzo uh, fan, so I wouldn't want to fuck with Argentine hooligans, but still, why did you do this? Wasn't me. Failure. No, really it wasn't. Oh. <laughs> I can't tell you who it was, okay? <laughs> now, W is for Wi-Fi in there. People just can't seem to get this right, ever. Well, <laughs> I managed to work for the Chicago Blackhawks until this guy ended up on TV. What's the problem with him being on TV? Zuri in half. Zoom making on password now. Oh, that's no good. Was that the user error? I had a policy saying not to write down the password, right? And I made sure not to have the password written down when I went to work for the Super Bowl.
Zero again. Oh no, Fangley. Not again. You so silly, silly monster. What? But this time it's not written down. I it suppose it's not with policy. W is also for wipe on sex appeal. <laughs> which, <laughs> which I have photographic proof. And it turned that into this. Speaking of X-rated, um, this is where you continue to whip out your extensive collection of hackers and compromising positions as a failing. No, nah, that's next year's talk. I'm working right now on distribution crunch with Vivid Entertainment. I love Jenna Jackson's work, but she makes me feel good and no one of it is. Well, I hope you were involved in the Replace Sesame Street YouTube content with hardcore anal porn hack of a couple of years ago, failing. No. Nah. That's only because I was too busy stalking porn stars in real life. How would you manage to do that, since I assume that they use fake names and addresses? Well, they do. They have stage names, right? But I got the database with their real names and home addresses. But that type of information is protected by the US HIPAA Act, isn't it? It is, but I guess the website didn't have its monthly checkup. Burn. Right, so I've got no words for this next one, okay? This to me is the biggest security fuck up ever. If we couldn't get this right... How'd you make up? Okay, this is the biggest security fuck up in my mind ever. If we can't get this right, we're bloody doomed. <laughs> So apparently this is a thing, and he is, and he is right in his scare for the human race. <laughs> oh, well, well, just on the zero. Wait, hold on, we have some of them. <laughs> Zeus, the Greek guy? <laughs> no, Zeus, the banking Trojan. But this is Zeus, right? He looks, like he looks a bit like metal still coming, so yeah, don't you I'm not too sure that I see that resemblance. Except taller. <laughs> How about now? <laughs> Take your head off, baby. <laughs> <laughs>